One of the problems to which the international community fails to devote enough attention is the Kashmiri conflict awaiting a solution for 72 years. The stability and prosperity of South Asia cannot be separated from the Kashmiri issue. Despite the resolutions adopted by the United Nations Security Council, Kashmir is still besieged and 8 million people are still stuck in Kashmiri. They cannot get out. In order for the Kashmiri people to look towards a safe future with their Pakistani and Indian neighbors, it is imperative to solve this problem through dialogue on the basis of justice and equality instead of conflict. Another issue that the world seems to remain indifferent is the humanitarian tragedy Rohingya Muslims are currently facing. The Independent Commission of Inquiry established under the United Nations has recorded the existence of a genocidal intent behind the events perpetrated in Myanmar's Rakhine state. Turkey will continue to carry out its initiatives and endeavors to ensure the security and fundamental rights of the Rohingyas, as well as the humanitarian relief activities we have undertaken since the first day. The invasions, the conflicts and terrorist activities that continued in an uninterrupted fashion for almost four decades in Afghanistan have led to significant challenges at a global level. It is night time for peace and security to, be, security to be restored. This is up to us to assume responsibility and take up action. Esteemed delegates, today one of the biggest threats to global peace and stability is the skyrocketing racist, xenophobic, discriminatory and anti-Islamic rhetoric. Muslims are ranking number one who's who are the subjects of hate speech, discrimination, and defamation against their sacred values. The most striking example is the terrorist attack that took place last March in Christchurch in New Zealand. Just like the terrorist, terrorist attack targeting Muslims in New Zealand was unacceptable, the acts of terrorism targeting Christians in Sri Lanka and Jewish communities in the United States are equally wrong and unacceptable. We are responsible for turning this disease into a raging insanity. The populist politicians seeking to garner votes by provoking these tendencies, as well as the communities normalizing hate speech under the pretext of freedom of expression, are in the leading spots, and they are the ones to blame. The prejudice, the ignorance and bigotry, as well as the attempts of marginalization towards the migrants, particularly the Muslims, pave the way for the rising of these morbid tendencies. This scourge can only be defeated by common will and efforts. It is our fundamental duty as statesmen and stateswomen to adopt an inclusive and tolerant public rhetoric to eradicate this foe once and for all. The Honorable Secretary General of the UN has recently introduced an action plan for safeguarding religious sites. It's a UN initiative in the establishment of which Turkey has shown political leadership as a part of Alliance of Civilizations. We hope that this action plan will help raise awareness on this issue. And I hereby request the designation of March the 15th by the United Nations as the day when the Christchurch attack was carried out to become the International Day for Solidarity Against Islamophobia. I also invite the Islamic world to start a thorough assessment of all the issues, particularly the Sunni-Shia divide, which have provided so far the ground for its internal conflicts, as well as, as well, which served as political instruments for power struggles and settle the disputes once and for all. Turkey is a rightful successor to the collective heritage of both Eastern and Western civilizations due to our geographical location at the center of the ancient world. There, therefore, we are obliged to 
take necessary steps forward and assume responsibility and rise up to the occasion. We continue to fulfill our responsibilities towards humanity as we are deeply affected indirectly or directly as a result of crises that besiege our region. A United Nations, and in particular a Security Council, reformed on the basis of justice, moral values and conscience, will provide hope and aspiration to humanity once again. Turkey stands ready to support all of the endeavors and initiatives in that regard. With this understanding, we are willing to assume the presidency of the 75th United Nations General Assembly. Therefore, we have nominated for this important post Ambassador Volkan Bosker, former Minister of European Union and current Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Grand National Assembly of Turkey. We have full confidence that Mr. Bosker, a seasoned diplomat and politician, will shoulder this responsibility very successfully. I believe you will not spare your support to him. I, I, Istanbul, the biggest city in Turkey, currently hosts various UN regional agencies, and we would like to turn Istanbul into a bigger regional and a global hub for the United Nations. The United Nations Technology Bank for the Least Developed Countries became operational in the vicinity of Istanbul last year. We also appreciate the positive and encouraging reactions we have received in return for our proposal to host a United Nations Youth Center in Istanbul, which I have announced last year from this very rostrum. The members to the UN Group of Friends of Mediation that we co-chair have reached 59. We have carried this UN, initiat UN initiative into the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. I believe that it is within our reach to find fair, equal, equitable and conscientious solutions to all of the global challenges that we face. And I would like to conclude my remarks with the following wishes. Freedom for all, peace for all, prosperity for all, justice for all, a peaceful and a safe future for all. I wish the work of the 74th 